Once again, thanks for joining me on Speaker Podcast. Our speaker this uh, this morning is a terrific friend. She's also a facilitator, a trainer, a motivational consultant. Um, very inspiring and dynamic with her clients. Her workshops are phenomenal. Anne Vautour has been at this for over 20 years in both the public and private sectors. She's a certified neuro-linguistic practitioner, negotiation and conflict management specialist, and open space technology specialist. She is qualified to administer something that you might have heard of, maybe you haven't, but a lot of her clients are tuning into something called the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator Personality Test. And and tell us a little bit about that. I have heard of it. I, I've certainly done it with you. It's, it's phenomenal. But tell folks about it who haven't heard about Myers-Briggs. Judy, the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator has been around for more than 70 years, and most Fortune 500 companies use it. It's used 2 million times a year worldwide. It's been translated into two dozen plus languages, and it's used, as I said, in more than 70 countries around the world. The reason why it is so uh, it is so well used is because it just bloody works. And it was developed more than 70 years ago by a mother-daughter team, and they actually uh, are basing it on Carl Jung's theory of psychological types. So Catherine Briggs and Isabel Briggs Myers developed this tool, and what we're using it for now, it's a way for people to start and understand who they are. So let's, before you go any further, let's outline what those, uh, what those personality types are. What are the baskets for personalities that people typically fall into? Okay, so Judy, just humor me now. Um, I'm going to ask you, if you wouldn't mind, would you fold your arms for me right now? Sure. Okay, done? Yep, done. Okay, now fold them the other way, the opposite way. Yeah, a little bit weird. It feels a very, very strange. So when I asked you to fold your arms the first time, mm-hmm. uh, just describe to me how that was for you. Uh, it felt great. Very comfortable. I've got my left hand uh, over my, my right arm. Okay. And let's just shout out some words that describe the, the second time when I asked you to fold your arms the opposite way. Uh, I'd say awkward. I had to stop. I had to think about it. Uh, uncomfortable. Not in my not in my space. That's not how I. Um, that's not how I work. Okay. So so essentially, what Carl Jung said was that we are born with natural tendencies. But I want to note that we can all use, you know, we can all, you know, fold our arms one way or the other way. Just, it's just more comfortable sometimes to do it the natural way for us. But, but for example, if you are right-handed and you break your right hand and you have to use your left hand, eventually you're going to be able to do it to some capacity. Right. I also use the example of, let's take basketball players. The best basketball players are those people who can dribble with both hands equally as well. Mm-hmm. So the, the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator is a tool that allows you to, to have a really great insight into who you are, how you're wired, and how you experience the world. So again, going back to uh, the, the original thought, what are the personal type personality types then that, uh, that, that we narrow it down to? Or when you go into a company, what are the personality types? We don't have to mention all of them, but what are the types that typically come up in an average office or, uh, or workspace? Well, that's, that's a really interesting question because that really does vary. And uh, there are 16 types, and the types, maybe it would be helpful for me just to give you insight into how the tool is set up. And it's based, it was a, it's a forced choice uh, tool, so you're, you're asked to do, would you do A or would you do B? Mm-hmm. And so essentially what the MBTI does is it looks at dichotomies, it looks at polar opposites, so you, you would score either extroversion or introversion, and that's how you take and get your energy. How you make decisions, it's either by using sensing or intuition. Um, how you make decisions is either by using thinking or feeling, 
and how you look at your external world is either using judging or perceiving. And I know that may sound, you know, obscure right now, um, but essentially what we do is we look at, for example, let's take extroversion and introversion as just one of the, the areas that I might work with with a company. So you know that there are, there are people in, in companies that you, if you're working with someone, you, you just feel like you connect with them automatically, like, mm-hmm. oh, gosh, we've known each other forever. And then there are sure. people that you feel like, oh, my gosh, this person is from Venus, mm-hmm. you know, or Mars, you know. So essentially, with extroversion and introversion, people misunderstand what that's all about. Somebody who prefers extroversion doesn't mean the loudest person in the room. Or somebody who prefers introversion doesn't mean that they're the quietest person in the room. So, Judy, do you know people who are like the life of the party all the time? Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. And in your profession as a as a stand-up comic, uh, I'm sure you've seen all ranges of people, haven't you? Yeah, and most people think that comics are natural extroverts, but in actual fact, a lot of comics are introverts. They don't like being, once they're off that stage, they really kind of keep to themselves. And you know what? That's a perfect segue into one of the one of the big things about extroversion and introversion. Somebody who prefers introversion can perform and can be in front of, of a group and can be the life of the party. But once you are finished and off that stage, what is it that you really want to do, Judy? Well, most comics, you just want to be able to sit and maybe yak with the other comics or the client or just have a drink and just, you know, relax. And people come up to you and say, hey, that was great. You chat with them one-on-one, but you're kind of off the clock at that point. You're not the ha-ha-ha, funny-funny. Like I said, most comics are just quiet, um, introspective people. That's right. And because with introversion, people get their energy from being internal. They, They... they kind of go inside, and that's where they get their batteries recharged, whereas somebody who prefers extroversion, they get their energy from outward stimulus, like the, the outer world, people, things, action. And, um, and oftentimes what happens is that, let's say, let's go to a situation, I'll use work again. There may be somebody who prefers introversion, and oftentimes there people sort of, get this feeling that they're reserved and quiet, they're hard to get to know, and they're not team players. Whereas the person who prefers extroversion, they're that person who is often friendly and talkative and easy to get to know, and then people think, oh, they're the true leaders in the organization. But the fact of the matter is is that whether you prefer extroversion or introversion, you can be a great leader. It's knowing yourself that's going to make the difference. The more you know yourself, the more you can understand how you're wired and, and how you interact with other people, especially those people who are opposite to you. Again, I'm chatting with Anne Vautour. Anne is a facilitator, a trainer. She has a number of tools in her toolbox, a number of workshops. But uh, this morning, we're talking about the Myers-Briggs Uh, program and it's basically a a personality test there's so many personalities in an office in a workspace and it's how do we get the most out of those personalities how do we get those personalities to work with each other Uh, and what is the biggest conflict of personalities that you come across in an office what typically is the um, personality dynamic well I think it's when people do not understand the differences that exist on the team. Mm. And I want to stress that the differences on the team actually make your team richer. The more diversity you have, the better the product you are going to produce. But the key is you have to understand the differences that exist. And rather than judge somebody who's different than you, if you're curious about their type, if you're curious about what how they're wired, and then the differences actually brought together will make a stronger, better connection. So, so this is, the Michael's Break is used really, Judy, to close the gap between people. Uh, one of the biggest conflicts that I see in organizations is, again, going back to the difference between people who prefer extroversion and people who prefer introversion. A lot of people misunderstand the, the, the two. Uh, people who prefer extroversion have a tendency to, to think and then speak and then think. And sometimes they think out loud, and they're using their hands, they're using gestures, they're excited, they're changing their mind.
minds, and that's how they process. Whereas somebody who prefers introversion, you ask them a question, and you have this silence. And it may just be 15 seconds, but to somebody who prefers extroversion, it feels like two days. And people who prefer introversion have a tendency to want to think and then speak and then think. They're always keeping their thoughts and emotions quite private. Uh, and it, it may come across at the, as they're not team players. So that, I think, is one of the biggest things that causes conflict in organizations. And, and, and understanding that if somebody is being quiet, it doesn't mean that they're not a team player. It simply means that they're recharging their battery or they're processing something. And so that's one of the big differences. The other is how people make decisions. We have a tendency to either make a decision by using thinking, which is quite logical, and that would be, you know, let's, let's really take a look at, you know, what's right, what's wrong. Let's take a look at, you know. Uh, right, A, B, C, and then they go through the test, right? That, that's right. They go okay. through the assessment. So the people who prefer thinking decide with their head, and people who prefer feeling decide with their hearts. And so that in itself can cause differences because... Some people are saying, oh, you're too soft. Some people are saying, oh, my gosh, you're just a mean about how you're, you know, making that decision. So, again, in life, you have to make decisions both ways sometimes. And like you said, it's all these different personalities. It's not that one personality is better than the other. It's just that we have different personalities. And your role as a facilitator, as a consultant, is to go in there, figure out these different personality types, and help maximize um, maximize the dynamics within that office, within that workspace. I think it's phenomenal. I am just uh, blown away by how long Myers Briggs, the the actual uh, personality test, has been around. I don't think people realize that. Yes, and and it was brought. Um together by the mother-daughter team because when people were coming back from the war, they noticed that people seemed lost and they seemed purposeless. And so what they did is they developed this assessment so that people could get a better handle on who they are and really what makes them tick. I always ask clients before we start, I ask them the question, who is responsible for your life? And the answer, Judy, is? Of course, we're responsible for our lives. That's right. That's right. And uh, so my next statement is, so when you know better, you can choose to do better, can't you? Right, exactly. So what the Myers-Briggs allows you to do, it allows you to become responsible for your own life by learning honestly who you are and how you, know, how you sort of live your day-to-day life. And the more you know, the more you can adapt or focus in on your strengths or make some changes to those blind spots that you might have. Again, I'm chatting with Anne Vautour. Anne is a certified neuro-linguistic practitioner, negotiation and conflict management specialist, uh, an open space technology specialist. She is uh, an expert with team building, conflict management, and just basically any area of human development. Anne is, uh, like I said, amazing. I have uh, seen with my own eyes the work that Anne does with, uh, with offices, with the military, with uh, just people. So if you would like to get a hold of Anne, uh, I'll give you her website. It's Anne V, A-N-N-V as in Victor, org. And Anne, is there a phone number that folks can reach you at or is that the best? way that uh, people can get a hold of you is through your website nv.org. The website is probably the best way, Judy, and or email. And email is info, I-N-F-O, at org. Perfect. And thanks so much for joining me. Judy, it's my pleasure. And as always, lovely to chat with you.